Hi, so this is going to be a uh, mini series of videos where we basically will be taking a piece of concept art and creating the high poly mesh, low poly, bakes, textures, the whole shooting match, and we're going to end up with something in Unreal Engine 4 that's finished. Uh, along the way, there's a lot of stuff to talk about from you know, the design of the high poly to choices made during the low poly phase to how do you unwrap something like this. Uh, it's a hard surface prop, just know that up front, so if that doesn't interest you, uh, you might not get anything out of this, but that tends to be what I deal with mostly, so that's what I talk about. Uh, we're going to deal with, uh, the first thing we're going to deal with is concept art and how to apply it to the high poly mesh. So let's just roll into that. So first a little bit of a preamble about how I found this piece of concept art. I love uh, industrial design sketching. Just that whole look and feel really works for me on a, I don't know, on a visceral level. I'm not sure what it is. I've always wanted to build those, those models that I see or those shapes that those guys make. So I stumbled across a designer on Instagram named Marius Kindler, and I'm sure that I've butchered his name. I'm sorry about that, but I'm going to include a link to his Instagram down in the description of the video so you can go follow him yourself because his work is great. You know, I love looking at his stuff. You can see here, this is all really cool looking stuff, just shapes and cool design ideas and all that sort of jazz. And I think this is good fodder for, you know, making future videos. And he's agreed to let me use whatever sketches I want. So thank you and hopefully we'll make good use of this stuff. Now, the one that I've chosen for this particular video series is uh, the gas cooker. I chose this because this gives me a chance to talk about concept art. So uh, looking at this sketch, now let me get my, my stuff on here. You can see that this is, he's got two or three designs um, down here on the page, which is very useful. Uh, typically when you get concept art, well, uh, assuming you get concept art, you generally get one drawing, you know, because the concept artist has decided that they want this and the art director has approved it and they give it to you. And typically you get uh, one of a couple scenarios. You're told to replicate it exactly, you know, which is fine. Or you get told to take this you know, use it as a jumping off point and, and be inspired by it and put your own twist on it sort of thing. Or, you know, more commonly, you're given a couple of pictures of existing things and you're told, yeah, hey, take these, mash them together, uh, put your own spin on it and make sure we don't get sued for copying someone's design exactly. So in this case, we're going to go with the inspirational type, type feel. So. You know, there's different styles of bases here. There's different kinds of, uh, of flame, I don't know, shooters, uh, emitters, whatever they're called. I'm obviously not a designer, but you can see there's different things we can take from each piece and jam together. So this primary shape on the bottom is the one we're gonna be focused on. And we're gonna take elements from the other ones and we're gonna add a few elements of our own. So we're not gonna end up with exactly this but we're gonna end up with something that sort of looks like it. Now, when dealing with a shape like this, my the best piece of advice I can give you is to, to build the model in such a way that separate pieces that would be separate on the actual object itself are separate in your model. It just makes it easier for exploding, for baking, and for a number of number of other reasons that we'll get into once we start looking at the actual model. But things like, you know, uh, this grading, uh, uh, the separation lines here at the base here, the one you know, that's underneath that you can't see, this little uh, doohickey handle, the hole that it's sticking out of, that kind of thing. Those are all separate pieces and building them as separate pieces will not only speed you up because you're not worried about stitching stuff together that doesn't need to be stitched together, but it will ease your burden somewhat when it comes to the low poly. And we're also going to get into how to handle small frequency detail. 
versus high frequency detail. Now, real quick, you can actually see that Marius has done a good job with that here. He's got these, these ripples around the outside here. There's some extra detailing in here. There's lots of ridging down here and on the knob itself, but on the body of the mesh, it's very plain. And that gives your eyes a resting spot when looking at the mesh. You, uh, your inclination when you start making high poly meshes is you want to slather everything with detail because you're having a great time and it's fun and all that kind of stuff. And it is. But from a design perspective, you want to have those plain areas where you can rest and appreciate the shape you know, before diving back into the detail again. It's just helps the brain to ease into things a little bit. Now we are going to have to make up some stuff here because you know I can't see the bottom. Um, I can't see the other side. And we're going to use that uh, to our advantage to add a little bit of realism to the model. And uh, uh, let's just get over to the model and start looking at it. That'll be more productive. Hang on.